ever get that feeling, you know, like, are we really alone out there? Well, today we're diving deep into a story that kind of makes you wonder, a case that puts that question front and center. It's the 1978 New Zealand Air Force UFO incident. Yeah, this one, it grabs you right away. December 30th, routine training exercise, you know, just another day over the South Island. And then, boom, things get really interesting. Right. And the thing is, this wasn't just some folks out hiking and seeing lights in the sky, right? We're talking about experienced pilots, multiple aircraft, picking something up on radar. Hard data. This wasn't some blurry photo or anything like right, that. Exactly. And they didn't just see it and, like, shrug it off, you know? Yeah. According to the reports, they tried to intercept this thing. And that's where it gets wild, right? They try to intercept. But this object, it outmaneuvers them. We're talking speed and movement like nothing they'd ever encountered. Which, honestly, that's what makes this case so fascinating to me. It bumps it way up the list in terms of, like, credibility, you know? Oh, absolutely. Because if you were just, like, skimming through a bunch of UFO sightings, that detail that they tried to chase it down, that changes things. It takes it to a whole other level, for sure. And then the way they describe the thing, too, metallic, disc-shaped, it's like, come on, that's straight out of the movies. It really is. But here's the thing. It gets even more interesting. This wasn't just a visual thing for the pilots. They had the radar confirmation. And on top of that, there were multiple eyewitness accounts from people on the ground. See, that's what gets me, right? If it was just the pilots, you could maybe, maybe explain it away as some kind of training exercise gone wrong or something. But people on the ground, too, reporting bright lights, strange movements, the whole nine yards. And they weren't all seeing the same thing from the same spot, either. These reports were spread out, like... A pretty big area. So it wasn't just mass hysteria, everyone freaking out over a weather balloon. Exactly. These were independent observations. You know, you've got trained professionals in the air and everyday people on the ground, miles apart, and yet there's this consistency in your descriptions. It really makes you think something unexplained was happening up there. It really does. And it's not like these were vague descriptions either. I mean, some people even reported hearing things, a low hum, along with seeing this object. That detail, the sound, that just adds this whole other layer of weirdness to it, don't you think? It really does. What could even create an effect like that? Yeah. It's those little details, you know, that make the 1978 New Zealand incident so fascinating. Even after all these years, it sticks with you. No kidding. So we've got these pilot reports, radar data, eyewitness accounts from all over. I mean, this obviously got people talking. You know, you got to figure the New Zealand Air Force was feeling the heat, right? Yeah. I mean, this wasn't just some small town gossip. This was making headlines, becoming a whole thing. Yeah, for sure. And I can only imagine, how do you even approach a situation like that? If you're the Air Force, what do you even say? Well, at first, you know, they tried to downplay it a bit. Yeah. Suggested it could have been a case of mistaken identity, like maybe they misidentified some aircraft or uh, maybe it was just some weird weather thing. Right, the old weather balloon explanation. But come on, how long can you really stick with that story, especially when you've got all this evidence piling up, right? Exactly. Especially when the witnesses start coming out of the woodwork and, more importantly, the kind of people they were. These weren't just, you know, random folks. We're talking respected people in the community, teachers, business owners, people who had no reason to make stuff up. Right. They had nothing to gain by, like, suddenly claiming they saw a UFO. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so the weather balloon excuse is out the window. So then what happens? What did the authorities actually do about it? Well, they ended up watching a full-blown official investigation. And they didn't mess around. They brought in the big guns, mm -hmm. aviation experts, astronomers, even physicists, a whole team of specialists. Wow, imagine being on that team. That's got to be one of the stranger assignments. Okay, team, figure out if we've got aliens. What were they even looking for? Like, how do you even begin to investigate something like that? Well, basically, they were trying to see if there was any known explainable thing that could have caused what happened. Right, right. Like, could it have been a meteor or something yeah. entering the atmosphere at a weird angle? Or maybe were there any atmospheric conditions that could, you know, mess with radar and create these visual effects they were seeing? Basically, they were trying to find any sort of scientific reason, any way to explain it within the realm of what we know. Makes sense. So after all that, all those experts, all that data, did they find an answer? That's where it gets even more interesting, see. Because after all that investigation, they couldn't actually come to a solid conclusion. They just couldn't rule out that this might have been something truly, well, extraordinary. Something we just don't understand. Wait, so they basically said, we got nothing. Well, not in so many words, of course. The <laughs> official report was 
very carefully worded, as you can imagine. They acknowledged the incident happened. They detailed everything they had. But in the end, they said they couldn't explain it with any certainty. Man, that's got to be frustrating for everyone. I mean, the pilots, the people who saw it, the investigators themselves. Imagine having this thing happen, this crazy experience, and then never really getting any closure, no real answers. It just becomes this mystery, you know? Yeah. So what happened next? I mean, the story didn't just end there, did it? An official investigation, experts stumped. This had to be major news back then, right? Oh, totally. This wasn't just some local news blurb. The 78 New Zealand thing, it blew up. Yeah. Became international news. Newspapers, TV, everyone was talking about it. And remember, this was way before the internet, before news was instant and everywhere. So for this to break through like that, it had to be big. That's true. No social media to make it go viral back then. So I wonder, all that coverage, all that mystery, do you think it changed how people saw similar events after? That's what's so interesting about a case like this. It makes you think, did it really happen more? Or were people just like more tuned into it? Because get this, after the incident, reports of UFO sightings, they actually went up all across New Zealand. It's like suddenly everyone's looking up, wondering if they'll see something strange too. It's like that idea that we find what we're looking for, you know, or maybe what we're ready to see. But the 78 incident, it didn't just fade away like some forgotten headline. Nope, not at all. It became one of the big ones, a landmark case in all this UFO stuff. You see it everywhere, books, documentaries, anytime someone tries to really dig into these unexplained sightings. It makes sense though, right? Right. You've got credible people saying they saw something, including trained military pilots. You've got radar data that backs up what they're saying. And to top it all off, you got this official investigation where even with all their resources, they couldn't come up with a down-to-earth explanation. Mm. It's like the perfect recipe for a mystery that just won't quit. I know. It makes you realize, for all we think we know, stuff like this happens and it just throws everything up in the air. It's kind of humbling. Totally. And you know what I find really interesting? The way this event still gets to people, even after all these years, I think it speaks to something really human, that desire to understand what we don't know, to wrap our heads around the idea that maybe, just maybe, there's more out there than we realize. Definitely makes you look at the night sky a little differently, huh? It really does. The 78 New Zealand incident, it's like this reminder. Even now, with all our fancy technology and science, there are still things we just can't explain. And maybe that's what makes it so captivating. It's those unanswered questions. The possibilities that keep us coming back. That's a great point. So, there you have it. A deep dive into one of the most puzzling UFO encounters ever recorded. Yeah. Misidentified plane. <laughs> Technology we just don't get yet. Something else entirely. We might never know for sure. But one thing's for sure. The 1978 New Zealand incident, it keeps that sense of wonder alive. It reminds us that the universe is full of surprises, things we know and things we don't. Until next time, keep exploring.